Thank you, Mrs. Green. The Lord takes a little that we have and does a lot with it. I'm glad He does. We're going to look at some of that tonight as we look at what our mission for missions is at First Baptist Church. I try to be relatively, uh, have, have philosophy and in, in, in the theology behind what we do. Right? Believe it or not, I try not to just shoot off the hip. Okay? Now, why are you laughing, Mrs. Mitchell? I try to think through and pray through and study through why we do what we ought to do. And this is a tremendous church with a tremendous foundation, all right, for missions and for souls and for people. And just on a side note, I am glad to see people back in the pews at First Baptist Church. I was thinking that early in the service, and I could see the on the air sign that is up there that we uh, put in during the time of live stream, so I would know when we actually went online. And when we first started doing these, these live streaming services without anyone here, I wouldn't know exactly when I was live. And so I said, we've got to figure out something better so I know when it's on and when it's off. All right? And so that's the long, but I thought, well, what a blessing. All right? And I know still some not joined us, and that's all right. You come back when, when you ought to. But I'm so thankful for your smiling faces, for your sleepy faces, all right, for just being there in the pews, all right? That's a blessing. And seeing you nod every once in a while, say amen if it's so necessary and enjoy. I think the music was blessed by the music tonight, by the folks saying, Brother Goldsworthy, that was a tremendous song. I thought you nailed it. Praise the Lord for that. But we're blessed here at First Baptist Church. But the question tonight that I want to answer is the mission of missions at First Baptist Church. Why do we have Missions Month? Why do we have missions? And what is it supposed to look like for First Baptist Church? Is it just that, you know, we do some faith promise, missions giving, and you have those cards we'll have at the end of the service? Is it just that you give that and then, hey, I've done my part. I put $23.33 in, and so I'm good for missions at First Baptist Church. And for the rest of my life, if I just add another dollar this year, I'll be at $24 and another dollar next year, and boy, God will be pleased. Is that what missions is about at First Baptist Church? Or is that all that there is? Well, I don't think so. And I think most of you would say, no, that can't be all there is. Is it that we should send person after person, and possibly so? Excited that both Eric and, and Jackie will come and be sent from our church and both grew up here. What a blessing. Both sat under Pastor Latin, his teaching and preaching and his leadership. His mark is forever on their ministry. They will go out and they will not soon forget what they've learned here at First Baptist Church and they might not even realize it yet. It kind of ekes into your pores. They won't even know until they get to the mission field. Uh Uh-oh. Kind of like being a dad I mentioned a little bit ago. What is the mission for missions at First Baptist Church? What is our purpose when we give, what's going on when we give? I give to Faith Promise or give to the general fund. Where does the money go? What are we doing with that money when it goes to missions? I had the privilege of going this uh, 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 past little bit to go see the Summers in God. And they're doing a tremendous job. Brought back an excellent report for John and Patty Summers and the girls there. That is money, as we said from First Baptist Church, money well invested. It is not spent, it is invested and if I can tell you this, that money we invest in those type of missionaries like John and Patty Summer, I believe Eric and Jackie to be that type, and many others. Here we have Fran and uh, the, the Puentes and Rebecca, and of course Rodney and Be- Becky, and if I start to name missionaries, I will forget some. But, but in those missionaries, we invest that way. There is no chance of a stock market crash with that investment. It won't be the next week we get a report from the Lord that that money has now uh, been negative, all right? Like some of your 401ks or perhaps Ross of the last few months. That is money well invested. But what is our obligation? The dictionary. Miriam Webster Online Dictionary. A useful tool in life, once a year. It says a missionary is a person undertaking a mission. Thank you, dictionary. I now can sleep peacefully tonight. I can now shut my eyes and rest knowing that the definition definition of missionary has now been answered. A person undertaking a mission, especially a religious mission. Well, we understand what a missionary looks like when they're sent from First Baptist Church or come through First Baptist Church. Appreciate having the McGeorges here this morning. And I do love Australian accents as well as as a bonus in life. The fact is we're all missionaries, are we not? We're all supposed to be on a mission for the Lord. And I would say that the mission for missions and the mission of First Baptist Church, don't miss this, is to advance the kingdom of God. 
Right, right there, that is our mission statement to advance. That we exist as a church, as a Christian, to advance, to further the kingdom of God. That's why we are here. It's His agenda, not my agenda, and not your agenda. It's His money, not my money. It's His time, not my time. In case you're wondering if that was ever mentioned in Scripture in other places, Jesus did that. It says that in John 6, 38, For I came down, Jesus speaking, came down from heaven, not to do mine own will, but the will of Him that sent me. He said, I'm here to further God, His Father's will, further His kingdom, the kingdom of God. Throughout the Gospels, He'll make reference to the kingdom of God is like unto, or the kingdom of God is. In Luke chapter 2, when he was just a young man, probably around the 12-year-old mark. Remember, he got distracted in the temple. His parents couldn't find him, and they journeyed a little while down the road, a little bit, and, and uh, then realized Jesus wasn't among the caravan. They went back and found him, right? Talking to the scholars. And the scholars were humbled by his wisdom and knowledge. Apparently, they were, like Noah's parents, a little concerned that Jesus didn't, wasn't with the rest of, of everyone else. And parents, we can understand that. Right? There are times that we've all thought, where are my kids? And when we finally find them, say, where have you been? Other times, we try to lose them. That's a different story, different situation. And Jesus said this, how was it that ye sought me? Wished ye not? Did you not know that I must be about my father's business? His kingdom. Jesus did that. He demonstrated that for us, but he also said that in Matthew chapter 6. He said it this way, but seek ye first. If you know it, help me. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. My job, your job as a Christian, your obligation, your mission as a missionary for Christ is to further the kingdom of God. First Baptist Church, we are supposed to advance the kingdom of God through everything that we do. It's why we have different ministries. You may notice that we don't have a breakfast club here at First Baptist Church. Some of you would love that. Say, hey, sign me up. If I believed it would advance the kingdom of God, I would start one tomorrow. That's why we exist. We have different ministries. And, and like you think of the bus ministry to advance the kingdom of God. We use technology that we use buses. Partly because it's hard to have a bus ministry without buses. But we believe that buses are a better way to get people to church than bicycles. If bicycles would do it, we'd buy some bicycles. Bridgeport Baptist Academy, hoping to train young people to serve in the kingdom of God wherever God calls them. Wherever God calls them. Whether it be in a full-time work like perhaps I am, whether it be in full-time ministry at a shop, still to further the kingdom of God wherever God calls. Wherever God calls. We have these ministries. Our mission is to advance the kingdom of God. Amen. I'd like to tonight look at a few things. If you would open your Bibles to Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1, verse 8. One of the last, if not the very last thing that Jesus said before he ascended into heaven. It's the last thing that we have recorded in Scripture. And in Acts chapter 1, verse 9, the Bible says, And when he had spoken these things, we'll look at what these things I believe are. But in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus said to the disciples, and I echo it to the Christians today in 2020 of First Baptist Church, those here and those online, in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, But ye shall receive power. After that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in, Jude, in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Lord, I thank you for this time we have tonight. 
Lord, I thank you for this wonderful church and the heritage. Lord, I pray that as we look at our mission, our calling, as we're ambassadors for you, that you would touch our hearts. Lord, help me to communicate truth clearly and plainly. But Lord, may our hearts be open to your spirit. Lord, would you touch us in a way that maybe we resisted or maybe we're not doing the job that you want us to do in an area. Lord, touch us. Help us to respond to you. In Jesus' name I ask. Amen. I have tonight just two main points. Don't get nervous. It may not be that short, though. Understanding the mission and responding to the mission. If you understand it and respond, that's all there is to it. Just two parts tonight, understanding the mission and responding to it. What I believe we'll see in and from this verse. I want to first of all, though, talk about understanding the mission. What are we called to? I have three points tonight for this. The first one is this one. And part of the mission of First Baptist Church, to see the kingdom of God advance, I want to see, we want to see, God wants to see souls saved by the blood of Jesus. All right, souls saved by the blood of Jesus. You say, well, pastor, that seems kind of, kind of simplistic. Of course we know that. You know, there are a lot of exits on this highway to see souls saved. A lot of exits. You know that, that if we're not careful, we're not careful, then we won't be trying to save souls by the blood of Jesus. We'll be trying to save souls by our own intellectualism. And that has never saved anyone. Your brains cannot save anyone. It's impossible. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ can a soul who was condemned be hell now be granted freedom in Jesus Christ. Only by the blood of Jesus Christ. First, Peter tells us that for as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation, received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot. You see, it's not just by persuasion, but Paul tried to persuade all men. You see, there's a couple of different exits that I mentioned along the, along the path. Some would say, well, you know what, uh, uh, do you want to trust Jesus? Okay, you don't want to? Okay, bye, I'll leave you alone. I'll never mention it again to you without any urgency, without any fervency, without any passion to see souls saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You may have a co-worker who needs to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You may have a neighbor who needs to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. You may have a family member who needs to be saved not not by your own persuasion, not to just First Baptist Church, but to Jesus Christ by His blood. It's not just persuasion, though. We ought to try to persuade all men. And not to a false hope, but to a wonderful, glorious reality. You ever been out soul winning? Have you ever had this thought, I could convince them to be saved? They may get saved if I, it, just to get me to shut up and off their, their front doorstep. Just to get rid of me. I don't want anyone to be saved just because they wanted to get rid of me. I want them to be saved because the Holy Spirit was working in their heart and I was faithful with the gospel of Jesus Christ. I want them to be saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. Which has never not been effective when asked for. You understand that that always works when someone asks in faith to receive Jesus Christ. It's always been answered yes. It's never been refused. It's never not worked. It's never come up short. You never get an error message, can't load this particular website. You never have to double dip with soap twice on a sinner when they've been washed by the blood of Jesus Christ. It always works every single time. The first time that someone asks in faith and brings tremendous hope to the lost. I love the fact that here in Saginaw, First Baptist Church has a strong witnessing testimony. You can't go too many places in Saginaw and not find someone pretty quickly who doesn't know about First Baptist Church. And praise the Lord for that. 
through the faithfulness of this church and the past pastoral let, it's, it's phenomenal. And the members. You can't go much on the east side and not find someone who doesn't know Mr. Mitchell. All right, a six foot four white guy who wears silly hat. Are you six foot four? All right, with a silly hat. All right, you know, Mr. Mitchell. What a tremendous testimony. You find out all the time of folks who were saved by the blood of Jesus in the bus ministry. You find they were, they're going to church over here. They're doing this over here. And lives changed by the blood of Jesus Christ. You see, part of the mission as we further the kingdom of God is to see souls saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. What I'm saying is, if that's not part of your goal, if that's not part of why you operate in this world, then you're not on the same page as Jesus is. Because he said, I have come to seek and to save that which is lost. So if it never crosses your mind, if you can go a whole week and not even think about a lost soul, then you are not trying to further the kingdom of God. You're about your own business. But my business is important, Pastor. I've got a job to keep, a family to feed, and those are good things. Those are things of character. But that's not the Father's business. All right? To seek and to save that which is lost, to see souls saved. And while we go about our daily routine, to make sure always before us is this underlying mission, as a missionary, which we all are, because we're all about a mission, to go about His business. Who was in your path that I'll never talk to? I'll never see. Maybe you're the only one who will be the gospel witness. Will you be that gospel witness? Will you allow fear to creep in? Oh, I don't think I could cross that bridge. I don't think I could talk about that. I, I might offend him. Jesus said the gospel is offensive. But he didn't tell us to be offensive as we give the gospel. The gospel is offensive all by itself. If you think about it, you tell someone, listen, you're not going to heaven without Jesus. That's offensive. But the Bible never tells us to be a bully or a jerk. I don't see that about Jesus Christ ever. Though sometimes people became angry at what he said. He gave them the truth. They, they, they asked, like, well, you, what, what you mean, Jesus, is what we're doing is not good enough? It's exactly what I'm saying to you. It's exactly what I said to you. you. You got it. You figured it out. Jesus said this way, you, you were careful to tithe off the little things. You were careful to give of your herbs and spices, but you missed the weightier matters of the law. You missed the whole picture. And they were offended. Not because Jesus was offensive, but the truth was offensive. Oh, they were angry when he said that he is God. They didn't like that. They said, that is blasphemy. They were offended by that. But it's true. It's true. You're telling me Jesus is the only way to heaven? Yes, I am. And I'm only saying it because Jesus said it. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man cometh unto the Father but by me. The mission ought to be to see souls saved by the blood of Jesus. Not only that, though, to see lives transformed by the power of Jesus. You see, I want to see souls saved by the blood of Jesus. But I don't want it to stop there, and neither does Jesus. That's, the, the, seeing someone trust Christ as their Savior is not the end, it is the beginning. The beginning of a phenomenal journey, which we could spend the rest of the night talking about all the blessings that comes from following Jesus. And I'm blessed with a godly wife and three godly children on this journey for Jesus. What are you blessed with? I'm spoiled as I serve Jesus. I am flat out spoiled. I have way too many expensive toys in my life. And Jesus keeps on giving me more toys. Come on. I want to see lives transformed by the power of Jesus. Turn over to Matthew chapter 28. You'll know this is the Great Commission. Though some have relegated it to the Great Suggestion. It's the Great Commission. Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 and 20. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Verse 20, 
In Matthew 28, teaching them to observe all things. Whatsoever I have commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. Until the world ends as we know it. And that will happen only after Jesus Christ comes back and then makes a new heaven and a new earth. Until that time, Jesus said, you go about and you see souls saved by the blood, by his blood, but then transformed by the power of Jesus, teaching them to observe all things. Well, the only way that you and I could observe anything that Jesus said to do would be by his power, by his grace. Sometimes he said some hard things. Love your enemies. My enemies, Jesus? Pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Well, that's not hard. That's impossible. <laughs> Disciples often said this phrase, Lord, increase our faith. Translate it, Lord, what you just said was what we can't do. I want to see lives transformed by the power of Jesus. That's fur that furthers the kingdom of God. That's why we have an RU ministry at First Baptist Church. Amen. They get saved and then we want to see lives transformed by the power of Jesus because Jesus brings freedom from bondage. Amen. Why we have discipleship at First Baptist Church. Why we do Bible studies on Wednesday nights. Why we preach from the Word of God. Amen. Why we preach from the Word of God. I try real hard. You may not notice this or not, but I try real hard to preach from God's Word. I really do. All right? I, I love studying God's Word. I'm so blessed. I, I, you pay me to study God's Word. You realize that, right? Yeah. I really take it, to be honest, and quite transparent, I take it seriously. Sure, I want to preach it from God's Word. Yeah. I don't want it to be just my opinions. My opinions stink. And they're good for me, but they stink for you. God's Word is always beneficial. Yeah. And I try hard, to, and I know I will misstate things. I will missay things, all right? And I appreciate you putting up with me. Just, you know, I'm trying to preach... Preach this book as best I can. Preach the truth from God's Word because that is what will transform lives, not just opinions or good thoughts. If a preacher tries to find something that's never been seen before from God's Word, there's probably a reason for that. There's probably a reason for that. It's probably never been seen because it ain't there. All right? It's not there. The Bible's not meant to be a confusing book. It's a transforming book. It is the power of God. We want to see lives transformed by the power of God. There's some verses that go along with that. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. It is the power, the dunamis, the dynamite of God. For the word of God is quick and powerful. For the kingdom of God is not in word, 1 Corinthians, but in power. That I may know him and the power of his resurrection for our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost, according as His divine power hath given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness. I want to see lives transformed, not by a self-help book, though the Bible is the greatest self-help book ever written, not by some mumbly-jumbly philosophy, though the Bible is filled with philosophy. Not with some get-rich-quick scheme, but the Bible will tell you how to be wealthy in His economy. Right. I see lives transformed by the power of God. A man who was a terrible citizen of society and an awful role model and a not quite not good man by the power of God can be a model citizen, a witness of Jesus Christ, and a servant in the kingdom of God. That's the power of God. A life who no one else wanted. And Jesus cleans them up. They look pretty good. They talk pretty nice. And God can use them in pretty great ways. That's what the power of God does. I don't only want to just see souls saved. But it's a part of the first part of the advancing the kingdom of God. We want to see souls and lives transformed by the power of God. That means you may have to go back to their house. You might have to follow up on somebody again and again and again. Just have as much patience with that new Christian as God has with you and with me. Do you get it the first time? I don't. You ever feel like, Christian, that you're learning the same lesson over and over again? 
Why is that? I'll help you. Because you didn't learn it yet. You didn't learn it yet. Because uh, my Bible says that, that Christ will present us faultless. He, he's a master potter. Or the clay, he'll form us and make us. And if he sees an area that's not quite there, he'll form us again and again until it's just like he wants it. So the sooner we learn, the sooner he can move on to something else. So if you're learning the same thing over and over again, it's because you haven't got it quite got it yet. I know what it feels like in my life. I've said before, and I'll say it again, the lesson that I'm ready to learn is how to abound. Paul said that, I've learned how to be abased, right? How to suffer want. He also said, I learned how to abound. I can't wait to learn that lesson. <laughs> Sign me up, Lord. Take my first trillion, I'll learn how to abound. The truth is, we would, we'd make a mess of things, would we not? If we thought we didn't have to depend upon Jesus Christ, if we had a big fat bank account with trillion dollars in it, oh, I want to see lives transformed by the power of Jesus, baptized and discipled. We want to see souls saved by the blood of Jesus, lives transformed by the power of Jesus, and we want to see the third thought, to see a lost world converted. You see, well, Pastor, that's kind of like the first one, soul saved. Well, yeah, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like the second one, to see, uh, to see lives transformed. It's kind of like that, but a little difference here we see in our verse, right? He shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. You see the point of Acts chapter 1, verse 8, where they were supposed to go to the location? The whole world. You see that the, the, uh, the parameters for souls saved and lives transformed is the world. Where is the world? Yes. Yes. That's where it's at. It's next door. It's across the street. It's down the street. It's across town. It's across the river. It's across the other river. It's across the ocean. It's the whole world. See, the mission, for the missions of First Baptist Church is we want to see souls saved. We're all missionaries. We want to see lives transformed, and we want to see a lost world converted. I wouldn't mind if that all happened from First Baptist Church. In fact, that ought to be our goal. Through from First Baptist Church, see a lost world converted. Well, that seems really big, Pastor Howell. The whole world, just for First Baptist Church. Well, maybe you haven't read your Bible, but in my Bible, the God that I serve created the world, so for him it's not that big. A little bit smaller for him. It may be big, look big to you and me, but not to him. You see, my house looks big to my dog. The dog's three and a half pounds, but not to me. He sees everything from ankle level. Sometimes, Christian, we look at everything from ankle level. How do we do this? Well, we serve a tremendous God. He's already letting us see things and, 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 and things happen around the world. Now, with technology, we can do things we could never do before, right? That's why we live stream while we're on TV, other ways. We focus nationally in, in Jerusalem and Judea. Your neighborhood is your mission field. Your workplace is your mission field. But that's not all it is. The whole world is your mission field and my mission field. We also support internationally. Uttermost parts of the earth. Lord willing, in a few months, we'll commission the Turnbulls. Head off to Cambodia. Bitter, sweet commissioning. They're a wonderful blessing around here. Miss Jackie helps in the office, and she's a blessing, usually. Sometimes she teases me. Someone should tell her about that. That's not a blessing to me. I'm very sensitive. <laughs> wow. Never mind, I'll talk to her myself. <laughs> she's a blessed brother Eric. Four COVID-19, we have to go soul winning each week, and what a blessing. They're a blessing to have around here. Bittersweet. We'll miss them here, but I, won't, I don't want to keep them here. They'll need some things. They'll need some prayer. They'll need some money. We'll help with that too. They'll need some support. We'll help with that as well. I'm glad they're called from our church, but they may not be the only ones who ought to be called from First Baptist Church. Maybe God wants to call others to go across an ocean 
across the state, yes. across the world. William Booth, a founder of the Salvation Army, said this, Not called, did you say? He said, Not heard the call, I think you should say. Put your ear to the Bible and hear him bid you go and pull sinners out of the fire of sin. Put your ear down to the burdened and agonized heart of humanity and listen to its pitiful wail for help. Go stand by the gates of hell and hear the damned entreat you to go to their father's house and bid their brothers and sisters and servants and masters not to come there. And then look Christ in the face whose mercy you have professed to obey and tell him whether you will join heart and soul and body and circumstances in the march to publish his mercy to the world. David Livingston, a pioneer of missions, who walked over 29,000 miles. His wife died early in their ministry. He faced opposition from Scottish brethren and other Christians. He prayed this, Send me anywhere. Only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me, sever any ties, but the tie that binds me to your service and to your heart. We want to see souls saved, lives transformed, and a lost world converted. Not just Saginaw, though I hope Saginaw is reached by First Baptist Church. But that's just the first step in our mission. I'll quickly tell you this, that was understanding the mission. How do we respond to the mission? Three quick points to respond to the mission. Number one, go witnessing regularly. Be a witness. Be a witness. Jesus said we are salt and light. We're his ambassadors to a lost and dying world. Carry tracks, hand out tracks, Talk about Jesus. Talk about His goodness, about His blood. Be a witness for Jesus Christ. How do you respond to the mission? Start being a witness. Be an evangelist. We're all called to be missionaries on a mission. Go regularly. Took a little, during this COVID-19, knocking on doors, took a little bit of a change for us. We went for a little while and then it was, it was harder. There are some places in the world you cannot knock on doors. We'll be back to that very quickly here. And I'll be challenging you again to get out there knocking on doors. You know, some places in, in the United States, and I don't see this here, or, or I don't see the United States, people say, well, that doesn't work anymore. Oh, really? It doesn't work anymore. Does that mean you're not working it or, or that no one gets saved? You ought to be out regularly witnessing for Jesus Christ. I hope your neighbors know what you do and who you are. Oh, it's that crazy Christian again. Oh, it's the pastor of First Baptist Church. It must be weird because he's weird. His wife's nice and kids are nice, but he's a weirdo. They ought to know who you are. Your co-workers ought to know that you believe in Jesus Christ. Your friends who are unsaved, and I think you ought to have, you ought to know people who are not saved. Jesus did. Jesus knew people who weren't saved. And he tried to get them saved, to trust him. Go regularly. If you're not going regularly, you're not on God's mission. You're on your own mission. God's mission means it's his control. I don't just fit him in. He fits me in. Go regularly. Number two, pray faithfully. Jesus said to his disciples, the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Pray ye therefore, the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into his harvest. He also said in the model prayer, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Telling us, it's not about me, it's about him. And I ought to pray that it remains about Him. To pray faithfully. Don't forget Christ's only prayer request. When was the last time that you prayed for the harvest? When was the last time you prayed for lost souls? When was the last time you prayed for a lost soul by name? Lord, there's this person right here. Brother, sister, family member, co-worker, friend, 
Lord, they need the gospel. Lord, would you use me? Lord, I'm going to invite him again. I'm going to talk to him again. Lord, Lord, make the path plain. Make it straight. Lord, Lord, help me. When have you prayed faithfully? Hudson Taylor said it this way, you must go forward on your knees. Go regularly, pray faithfully, and lastly, give generously. This is not a sermon about money. I don't preach much on money. You folks are wonderful, generous people. But to be quite frank, for us to reach the whole world and support missionaries, we're going to need money. We give to church, we give to missions. Someone said this, today's Christians spend more money on dog food than missions. Aha, <laughs> uh-huh. I don't have a dog, Pastor. How about gas for your toys? Hmm. Gas for your jet ski? How about shoes at the store? What I have is for His purpose. Doesn't mean you can't have nice things. Doesn't mean you can't be a good steward. But we ought to give generously. It's the best investment plan known to man. Many years ago, the story goes, a young man went to China as a missionary. His income back then as a missionary to China was $2,500 a year. Obviously many years ago. A company decided that they wanted this young man to work for them and offered him a position with a $5,000 salary, double the salary. He declined the offer. It was raised to $7,000 and finally to $10,000 or figure a million dollars today. He still declined. The company asked if the salary was a sticking point. And he answered, oh, the salary is big enough. But the job isn't. What? Wish ye not that I must be about my father's business. Lord, I thank you for what you've called us to. Lord, I'm humbled to be able to serve you. Lord, forgive us for those days that we get sidetracked, those times we get sidetracked with our mission. And we miss your calling. Lord, we need to be about your business as a church, as Christians. Lord, help us. Just a moment, the piano will play. Stand to our feet and the invitation will be open. And I wonder if you're fulfilling the mission that God has called you to. Lord, send me anywhere. Only go with me. Lay any burden on me, only sustain me. Sever any ties, but the tie that binds me to your heart and service. Lord, bless this time of invitation. May we respond to you in Jesus' name. As you stand to our feet, the altar's open. If you need to pray, you pray. friend, you may have joined us online or may be here tonight and don't know that you're, you have a home in heaven. That God loves you and Jesus died for you. My friend, the Bible tells us we're all sinners, but that God loved us. He sent his son Jesus, but God commendeth his love. He showed his love toward us in that while we're yet sinners, Christ died for us. For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And the wages of sin is death, separation from God. My friend, if you're not saved, if you've never trusted Christ, you can tonight. You can trust Him to save you from your sin and rest in faith to Him. The Bible says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Believe that He came to earth, that He lived a sinless life, that He died on the cross and He rose again. Believe that if you trust Him, He'll forgive you for your sins. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My friend, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, would you trust Him tonight? You can pray a simple prayer like this, Lord, I know I'm a sinner. 
I know I deserve to pay for my sin, but I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me and he was buried and rose on the third day. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and him alone. And my friend, if you join us online or here tonight, you've never trusted Christ, would you trust in the night? Lord, I know I'm a sinner. Tell him, he'll hear you. I know I deserve to pay for my sin. But I believe that Jesus died on the cross for me. And he was buried and rose again the third day. Please save me. I trust in Jesus and him alone. My friend, if you just prayed that and meant that, the Bible says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And if you prayed that and meant that, then God saved you. Your soul has been saved by the blood of Jesus. I'd love to help you as a Christian. To see a number on the screen, would you call that number or send me a message? I'd love to send you the book, help you grow as a Christian.